Hey everybody, welcome back to Soul School. Now it's about that time to get into tonight's subject. Tonight's subject is the one and only Black Moses of Soul himself, the one and only Isaac Hayes, one of the very baddest cats ever to do it. And I could get into Isaac Hayes in about nine or ten different lanes easy, just off the top of my head. I mean, this cat was so cold. When you start thinking about what his contributions have been to the music scene, um, it's crazy. I mean, that cat was like literally, it's one thing to be in the space, but this cat was in orbit. He was literally in orbit. When you start talking about his abilities as a songwriter to make hits, whether it was Sam and Dave, I'm a soul man, and stuff like that, that he was writing with David Porter, that's one thing. We start talking about his solo albums, that's another thing. Which ones you want to talk about? You want to talk about the later ones like ABC Dunhill stuff like Chocolate Chip or the Polydor stuff or, you know, Don't Let Go and all that stuff or Zeke the Freak, which most people don't really talk about. Or you want to play it safe and start talking about his early stuff like To Be Continued, the Isaac Hayes movement, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, Shaft and all that kind of stuff. Soundtracks. This dude was absolutely a monster. We all know about Shaft. Shaft is just one of several that he did that was just absolutely monsters. And make no mistake about it, Shaft was bad. Shaft was real bad. But I started thinking about like three tough guys hung up on my baby, which the Ghetto Boys used to sample for um, mind playing tricks on me. That's one thing. But my favorite one out of all of them is this baby right here. This is called Truck Turner. This is one of the baddest soundtracks that you will ever hear any time, any place, any era. And when you start thinking about Isaac Hayes and Truck Turner, to me, I like this better than Shaft. When you start thinking about chase scene music, you immediately think about Curtis Mayfield and Superfly's Junkie Chase. But I'm gonna tell you, the coldest chase scene music I've ever heard in my life came from this album. It's a jam on here called Pursuit of the Pimp Mobile. And if you've seen Truck Turner in the way that they use it in the movie, you'll have no doubt of what I'm talking about. There's another jam on there called Driving in the Sun. Uh, which is another cold piece. The main theme from Truck Turner is cold. When you start thinking about even like some of the other stuff that he would do, like later on soundtracks, which he was just used as far as just being a piece of a soundtrack. Because if you remember during the early 90s, and I think it started with like New Jack City, they would use like kind of a compilation of just different people and different musics and stuff like that. You would hear like James Brown, the payback, like when we start talking about um, Dead Presidents, which is... Um, this baby right here. This is an old laser disc that I have, and this one is kind of hard to find. This is the Criterion version of Dead Presidents. It has all this different stuff, and I don't think you'll find this on any floor of any store, and even up on eBay. If you find it, it's going to cost you if you can find it. This is a laser disc. This is not an album. But when I start thinking about Isaac Hayes' music and the way that it was actually used in this movie, it was some different kind of stuff because you had Curtis Mayfield, you had James Brown, and like I said before, you had a compilation of just different people just doing different moods to the uh, movie, but nobody's mood was actually enhanced the way that Isaac Hayes did in reference to the way that the Hughes brothers used his music in their movie. We start thinking about when he got back from Vietnam and actually he was trying to figure out whether he was gonna go to the dark side or whether he was going to continue trying to get a job and his kid, you know, his daughter starving or whatever it may be or, you know, the whole pressure of, I got to do something. And if you remember, it was one night and it was actually raining and they were playing The Look of Love from the To Be Continued LP and it really set the tone and set the mood for Lorenz Tate who did an absolutely magnificent job in pulling that off. And even in the end of that movie, when he was talking about what would happen actually in court and stuff like that and um not so much what would happen in court but you know i don't want to use the language he was using over the air but basically what he did for the country and stuff like that and they started playing walk on by and they actually had him on the prison bus quiet with all the other prisoners um the mood of that is just really really just just deep and see i had a couple of brothers that spent a lot of time in the pen and so it kind of made me start thinking about them 
and stuff like that. But all of that came from underneath the umbrella of Isaac Hayes's music for that particular movie of Dead Presidents. And I mean, like I say, when I start talking about Isaac Hayes, I can go into a whole bunch of different directions. Let's talk about him as an actor. What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about him being on the Rockford Files, which was deep. That was deep back in the 70s, watching Isaac Hayes on the Rockford Files. You want to talk about him being the Duke of New York and Escape from New York when he pulled up in that Cadillac with them chandeliers on. And we was in the movie where we was hollering. We was at the St. Francis in San Francisco and brothers, we we was in there hollering when we saw him. You know, he pulled up in that, I think it was an Eldorado when he had them chandeliers on his car. We was hollering, boy. I tell you, um, you start talking about him even in Truck Turner as the bounty hunter. It's kind of a trip because Yappy Kodo was a gangster, and I forget the dude who played the blind man in the Mac. His name was Gator, but he was a gangster too, and none of them wanted no parts of Truck Turner. They wanted no parts of him. I mean, Isaac Hayes was just a different kind of dude, and he did different kinds of things. And even when you start thinking about when the disco um, movement kind of started, um, he actually didn't get lost in that either. He did this jam called Disco Connection, which is what the lockers would use when they danced on Soul Train, rerunning them dudes, and it kind of set the mood for um, what they were trying to do. Basically, long story short, Isaac Hayes is a cat that we must not ever forget. And don't drink the Kool-Aid in reference to buying into him and Barry White being the same type of dude, which is what the media would um, always try to kind of pit them against each other. Two total different monster talents. Isaac Hayes was a monster. His arranger, Gene Page, they had different kind of things going on. Isaac Hayes and his arrangers had different kinds of things going on. The music was totally different, but it, unless you really, really are listening, you would think that it all sounds the same, and it really don't. They both like symphonic music and orchestration and stuff like that, but when I listen to Joy by Isaac Hayes, I hear Joy. When I listen to, by the time I get to Phoenix, I hear that. I don't hear Barry White. And at the same time, when I listen to Love's theme by Barry White, I hear his thing. And both of them, like I say, were equally just monster talents. There's no other way to put it, but Isaac Hayes, make no mistake about it. Later on, you know, 80s, mid-70s, late 70s, late 60s, you know, he just he was just a different kind of dude. And the whole thing with the bald head, I don't even want to start talking about that because I think the thing that I respect the most is when he was doing everything that he was doing, he was doing it as a black man. He, you know, we all had naturals and stuff like that, you know, me included, big naturals, he did it back then with a daishiki and a bald head and that's the thing that I probably respect most about him when I look back at that and I would hope that you know when we look at him and really look at his work and look at the whole aura of everything that was around him that we really look at him the way that we look at Ray Charles and just other people like that let's get to some entertainment real quick and I'll be back with a final thought in a few moments <laughs> <laughs> 